minus six minutes.
minus one minute. T minus 50 seconds. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy to manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. everyone it is wednesday night it is time for us to go out and make pizza on tonight's show All right cooking nice. with mj wasn't, wasn't this our cooking show i thought we were gonna launch a cooking show oh um, not with me cooking oh. show open can press press <laughs> one minute so speaking of of needed skills we just before we went live we were getting things set up over on chew also because we're at youtube and chew tonight and there was a person doing a mix on the front of chew they feature a video there never one of ours because that that pick videos yeah (sighs) man wow that was incredible mixing when shaney talks about people just touching knobs and looking important i think that was a poster child of that approach i digress so, MJ, what are we up to tonight? What do we got on the docket for tonight's show? Tonight is going to be kind of interesting because as I had spoken at the beginning, I want to take this to the next level. So tonight, I'm going to teach the absolute most basic beat-matched quick mixing that I could possibly teach. Okay. Um, it's going to involve, like I said, beat matching. It's going to involve intros and outros, and it's going to involve quick mixing. So you're only going to play a very short bit of a song, and, and I'm... This is going to be the absolute easiest way I think I can show you. So if you are an advanced mixer, you'll get nothing out of this because you do this 20 times, a, you know, every hour. And if you uh, if if you're someone who doesn't use like a controller, it will be difficult. I'm going to tell you, it'd be real hard to do it uh, with just um, a program and no controller or uh, CDJs or Serato and vinyl or anything like that. that. That most of what we're going to do is the absolute basics to be done with a controller. Sure. And that's kind of what we're showing tonight. But I'm going to show both tools and techniques because some of these things 
that are going to make it easier are tools and some of them are techniques. So that's what we're going to show tonight. Tools and techniques. We like that. Hmm. Awesome. All right. So I first want to thank Promo Only because they became a sponsor of ours this year and we thank them. And one of the things they've been doing is they've been releasing some of their uh, past catalogs of music. And one of them that they released is their Quick Mix collection. And if you don't know what a Quick Mix is, it's basically a song. Let's say your song's three minutes long. Someone does a mix of it that brings it down to like a minute, minute and a half, puts an intro and an outro on it, and that's a Quick Mix. We're, we're in and out. So everything we're doing tonight, that's the first tool that we're going to be working with tonight is the fact that we're doing all promo-only Quick Mix versions. Okay? So keep that in mind. Yep. The next one on this is cue points. Now, I want to show you the ones that I have, and then we're going to go back and maybe do an example. Actually, I probably should grab an example of one that's not done and then show the mixes. So sure. I'm going to do that. That sounds good. Um, MJ, uh, they're talking, David brought up a basic controller. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, I've got the NS62 uh, mm -hmm. here, and then mm -hmm. somewhere over here, I've got the DJ2 Go 2. Is mm -hmm. some of the things you're doing tonight, would it be possible to do on a DJ Go 2 Go 2? Just to prove it, I probably should have set it up tonight, but when I was setting some cue points, that's one of the things that I use that tiny DJ to go for. Um, I was doing it at the, at the desk, uh, setting some stuff up because I wanted to make sure that it can be done because you are going to be hitting two buttons at once. And, and almost 100% of the time, the first type of quick mix I'm going to show you is all press the play, press the pause. That's all we're doing. Hmm. So you press the play on the right, right time and press the pause at the right time. And that's what the simplicity of this I'm doing. And it will get more complex from that. So pretty much anything like that's why I say that it would be hard to do with just the software, because you're going to have to do two things at the same time. And it's kind of tough to do with a mouse. Um, if you have shortcuts in your keyboard, great, go, go for it. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty much from the very, very stop and start to then I'm going to start adding some effects and start adding some different ways to bring them in and take them out and stuff like that. So pretty much any controller of any size has a play button that works both as the play and the pause. And that's what we're going to start with, just the basics of that. Sure. Okay. All right. So let's, I'm going to switch, share the screen here with you next. Yep. Da, 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 da. And if you guys have any questions while uh, MJ's going through things here, he's looking and doing that. I can uh, pass the questions on to him. Just put those in the chat if you're watching us out on YouTube or Chew. If either spot. If you're watching this after our live show, you can put things in the, the questions in the comments down below. We try to get to those. Can't guarantee we will. We try. <laughs> All right. So those of you know, I use virtual. I like it. It works for me. But this, again, is something that can be done with any software. You don't have to have virtual. You don't have to have Sprite. anything. Anything, any software will do what I'm going to be showing you tonight. So all of these right here in this whole section here are the promo only quick edits. Well, at least up here they are. Um, all right. So you can see them there. So we're going to oh. pick uh, one. Let me pick this one. Kiss. It is Prince's um, Kiss. Uh, in, you know, Prince in a Revolution, obviously. Yep. yep. All right. So you see I have no cue points in there. So number one, to, one, number one tool is that I've picked a quick mix. Okay. So this song is actually beginning to end, including the intro on this edit is only a minute and 26. That's including the intro and outro. That's what a quick mix is in and out. Mm -hmm. um, the real song's got to be close to four minutes if I'm correct. Uh, yeah. I was going to say it is a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, so that's what we have there. Um, and we're not going to start it here at the beginning. We're not starting it there. What we're going to do is we're going to jump in and find where his first words are. So I'm just going to start jumping in and try to find that there. Zoom, zoom. All right, so and that's the first downbeat before his words. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to highlight Q.4. Now, the reason I do these is because I do four in, four out. So four is always the first word. So, okay. So the next thing we're going to do, we set that one. We're going to go back eight beats. There's, there's the second line. See the second line right there? And we go back another four, and we set cue point number three on that line. So now that means we have eight beats until he starts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? So there's your intro, and we're going to do the same thing at the very end of the song, but in reverse. So we're going to jump all the way to the end of the song here and find the last word he says on this quick mix. So right there would be the end. So from here on out is just 
kick drums. It's the outro. Sure. Okay. So we're going to set cue point eight there. Okay. It's all kick drums from then on out. Do the same thing here. Go back eight beats, which is two lines. Set cue point seven. So now we have eight out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're out. So all the songs I'm going to show you, that's all I'm doing is number one tool is the fact that I'm picking the song that is a quick mix. And you see that that's a minute and whatever some seconds minus the intro and the outro. So I, this is this is the song here. It, you know, begins over there. Here's where we're starting it. Mm -hmm. So we're only playing that much of it. And that's part of the quick mix of it. And the second one is that every time that we do this mix, what we're going to do is that we're not going to leave any, like our number eight point right here. It's all kick drums after that. We never leave any point of our mixing where there's kick drums. And the same with the, with the beginning. We would never start here with that long intro. We have to be into that song. And by the time they hear it, we're going to be here. That's the whole purpose of the quick mix, in and out. But the shortness of it is, is that all the ones I'm going to show you are all eight beats in, eight beats out, stop and start. Okay? So okay. you kind of got that in your head? Yep. Um, I'm going to, we'll come back to this one in a bit. I'm going to scroll all the way back to the top here. And we're going to go from, uh, what was it supposed to be? I think mine are out of order now. It is. It was supposed to go billionaire to pour some sugar. Okay. So we're going to go out of billionaire at this point, you know, Bruno Mars. Yep. So right there is where, see that cue point? Yep. That's where we're going to start the other song because we go in eight counts and it stops. So you're using that cue point, that, that last one, just as a visual. There's no... Correct. Just a visual. Okay. That's, that's, that's part of the tools and techniques is that we're making it as simple as can be that to where you always know if you set this up, you always know I, I start there. So I'm going to start there on here. Sure. So I've got one, two. Okay. Mm -hmm. so that's where... So we hit the sync button to, to make them sync because they were really close anyway. So I'm going to do three different different BPMs. So what I'm going to do is the first one is I'm going to come back here and let this play. And as this is playing and we get to right here, I press play on the right side and then they start together and they roll. I'm rolling it by hand right now. So that's why it's <laughs> I was going to say, wow, that idea. doesn't do that for mine. It must be yeah, I'm just doing it by hand trying to get them to match as we come up through there. So it rolls all the way through. So then now once it gets to there, and they're both at that point, um, we press pause on this one so that then this one then continues. Sure. So you have the two cue points that your pauses and goes. All right. So, and so it's going to sound like this. So all I'm going to do is this song is going to press play. And then when we get to that one cue point, I press play on the red deck and you'll see, you'll probably see this light up right there. Okay. And then once it get to that other cue point, I'm going to press pause here and just stop this. So it's going to be a hard cut. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of what it sounds like. And that's our mix. Do you want to see it again? Did yeah, everybody, let's everybody do, it, do, do it one more time. Now that you've shown it once, now they can pay attention to. All right. So we go there and we go. All right, there's our cue points. Oops, nope, I want. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, so starting somewhere in the song, so waiting for it. There it is. Press pause on the other one. And there's your mix. So now would you do any kind of a, a cutting of frequencies or anything during that eight the uh, eight, eight that's beat. that's the more complex yeah okay okay so that yeah, that could there's, be there's a thousand different things you can do with just that stopping and starting is all we're doing and that's kind of drop it that's the next step after drop it on the one um is to where you do have something synced and like i said using these tools it, in the techniques of where to do them it kind of stupefies them and 
puts them in their own order. So every time I'm going to grab these next bunch of songs, um, and I put them on, even though I, I held these in the auto mix section, I'm not auto mixing these. Please keep that in mind. I am not auto mixing these. I just put these over there because if I don't, can I move them over here? I don't know. One of the things with this, I have it set up to work in my hold area here because I want them in this order. Uh, my hold area, once I play them, they disappear out of the hold area. Show us, oh, your, show us the screen. We yeah, we're, we're seeing you. Yeah, that's fine. No, no, that's, yeah, I keep doing that. All okay. right, so that was our first one we did. Mm -hmm. the next one we're going to share over here. And then, like I said, I'm going to go back and show some other things here in a little bit. Um, let me get my mouse to go over to the other side. And, okay, we're back over here. Tell me when it comes up. Oh, I shrunk. Nope, we're good. Are yep. we sharing yet? Yep, we're there. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. We are good. Hey, next one I'm going to do is Return to the Mac, and we're going to go into Single Ladies. So it's the same sort of thing. We're going... We're out of it right there. And Single Ladies, we're going to come into it right here. And that's all we're going to do. So... Hit the sync button, put them in, put them in the same sync. Let this one rip. Stop and start. That's all you're doing. So I'll do that again. In and out. Super sure. simple. Go to the next one. Yeah, unless we have any questions, I'm just going to, I'm no, going to rattle through these. They're different BPMs is all the only reason I picked these. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, uh, there's, you know, the, the more advanced are, you know, looking at, you know, could you do this? Could you do that? So, and we, yeah, can we're going to, we're going to go into about a thousand. I'm going to be scratching songs in, scratching songs out, echoes, intros, all kinds of stuff. Perfect. But this is just to show you the simplicity of being able to do actual mixing. When people say, Oh, I don't have time to mix this, this, tools and techniques make it so stupid easy that it's almost it's almost dummy proof sure. when you set these up okay so i put my two there and i did the sync button so we're going to go into uh, call me maybe which starts here eight beats in and we're going out here now i picked here on this one keep in mind because even though you're still hearing her There's no no him. Yeah. So other people would let that mix through and go, but there's something going on there. I don't want to mix over it, but it's it's not enough to matter. So I'm going to use that and not make a person sit through all of this until we get all the way down here. That's how far we would have had to gone from the line here all the way down till we got to just the outro beat. And I don't want to wait that long because, sure. I, like I said, we want to get in and out of these quick. So we're going back to here. And we're going to jump in here. Nope, jump in there. All right, ready? Okay. Now, that's one where I would do an effect on, and we'll come back to that in a minute. And then the final one is uh, Move Like Jagger. And this one I like a lot because I tend to like faster music. So we're going to go Move Like Jagger. And we're out. Okay, that quick. And we're coming in here. Okay. Hey, I played that Saturday. Hmm. I play it like haunts. I It's probably one of my most played songs ever. Not this version, which I do play. I think I actually have my own edited version. So all we're going to do is we're going to jump between them two. The exact same thing is that. So... MJ, turn the music up just a hair bit, if you would, please. No. <laughs> guys. I think I ended up adjusting to get our two yeah. mics more How's this? even. There we go. Let's roll with that. So we'll do that again. Jumping in right there. In and out. 
So before we go any further and I show you the other techniques, the other little things you can do, any questions up to here? It's pretty simple, right? It's simple, yep. That's, they're just... Uh... Just, just, uh, I'm, again, I'm not doing auto mix. So it's, it's me. Um, keep that in mind. That is not auto mix. Um, free tools in the software. Again, this is about if you want to do it yourself. If you want to auto mix, this is not the show for you. Please click off the show and go watch something else. So this is for the people who want to advance themselves in mixing. All right. So this is the but, very first one. So the next thing, go ahead, John. But yeah, the, the, everything you're doing is done with virtual DJ in the software. I mean, it's not like you're going into Ableton or something else. I mean, it's, it's being everything you showed last well, any, week. Any software is going to be able to do what I just did. Yeah. Have absolutely. Any, absolutely. Any software can do what I just did. Cause this is the, 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 the stupidest, simplest thing you could ever imagine. Yeah. So, and I'm guessing it pretty doesn't much get simpler than this. I think there's only probably a handful of software packages for DJs that couldn't do what you're going to be yeah. showing tonight. Yeah. All right. So we're going to jump back up to the first example, billionaire. Yep. And we're going to jump in to pour some sugar and we're going to, same that point right there. Okay. Give me. Give me oh, I keep forgetting. I, I got to share. Right. And share, 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 share. There we are. All right. Tell me when it's up. We're good. We're there. All right. So this one, same thing. Okay. I got to wait till that little share thing goes off with. There we go. Same thing, but I'm going to scratch. What I'm going to do is when I go out this time, the outro, instead of just hitting the stop button, I'm going to hit, um, uh, there's three exit effects you can choose from. You can choose from a dump. Okay, which that one is a little long. Let me back that one off just a bit. There we go. Let's do that again. We have the backspin. And we have the echo out. And that is also on the wrong, there we go, quarter. So it would have been quarter like this. So now all of those are effects that are built into the software, probably in some way, shape, or form. And you, you've customized or you've picked some buttons to be those on your, your controller. Well, any, well, yeah, any software has it. So it already has it in there. It just depends on, like I said, if you're running Serato and, and, and Pioneer, um, there are buttons on it for these already built onto the Pioneer. Gotcha. Yep. So it's just, they're just effects that whether you can fake it, you can do the, the, the pull stop. Um, you can do, um, you physically can backspin the record out if you want. Like I said, I, I do both. So instead of, instead of doing, doing the, uh, Do your own backspin out. But that's just to show you that to tweak it just a little bit here, um, that we're going to just do some outs and just drop them out. So, sure. And I backspun out before I got there and kind of gave it that little effect. I'll do that again. So that back that backspin in this particular case was that like a three beat backspin or a four beat backspin? Four beat. Yeah. Okay. So it was a full major. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Whatever. I was counting. Right? But it's still just even if you do it by yourself in your mind, you should kind of know where that's at. So we come in there. Here we go. In a simple little in or out. We'll go to the next one. Turn to the Mac. So, so just to, if you can, would it, is there a difference? You have a preference that you wanted to make sure the backspin was completely done before the lyrics, I'm guessing, correct? You can, or you can do it after. Uh, I'll do this one after then. Oops, missed it there. And that was an after one. Okay. So really it's kind of a preferential when you're listening well, to the songs and after you've done it a time or two. Well, it's kind of like, you're, it, it's kind of like you're listening to all, all of these tools can be used on absolutely any song every time over and over and over. Mm -hmm. But each song you might want to tweak just a little bit to maybe, maybe make that mix smoother. Gotcha. Um, one of the things that I like to do 
is when we talk about twisting knobs is that I'll pull, you can see, oops, let me go to the mixer. I keep forgetting the mixer's not up there. Okay, so you can see there, um, you can see my, my base go up and down. Can you see it there on the left there side? Is. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so one of the things I'm gonna do is in this mix, I'm gonna pull the right side down. I'm gonna go four beats in, and then I'm gonna flip it, drop one, bring the other one up to kind of do a cross blend. That's how blending's done like that, yep. and then get out. So we're gonna go, all right, so we got that there. And you do a little bit of a blend there. You can do it smooth. You can do it fast. You can do it on the ones. You can do five. You can take it from here and go where one's down. You go five, six, seven, eight, one. So eight, do it on eight and one, or you can do five, six, seven, eight, one. You know, it's either eight, one, or the same mm -hmm. so these are little different things to give it a little different sound if you want it to sound a little different um same way coming in if you want to scratch coming in simple simple little scratch in so so i i was saturday night you mentioned that scratch in the uh, i was working with a a um a, a Hispanic DJ who uh, was at my event actually, and he came up there and he said, "Hey, would you mind if I if I spin a pedal?" I typically never do that, but okay. it was just something about this guy. It's like, yeah, let's 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 do that. His method of scratching in, and I, it wouldn't be called a, it wouldn't be the same as a scratch in, but he he would use he was a big onto the Q button. When you push mm -hmm. and hold the Q button, and does this? And this was a question I wanted to ask: Does that if I if you push and hold the Q button, does it start to play? And when you release the Q button that it goes back to the cue point. It all depends on how you have it set up. Okay. Most people have one set up to where it, it is a stutter and then returns to a blank. Other people have it to where it is a stutter and play, kind of like the um, kind of like the cue buttons are. So let me switch down here. Got 101 things here. Let's yep. switch over to here and we're gonna go here. Okay. Because with the way he all was right. he was yeah, saying so it. That's a stutter. And I think mine is set up because, again, you can set them up however you want. I think mine is set up that if I hold it down for more than three seconds, it then becomes a play. So I'm not sure if it is, so we'll see. See, as you see, it just returns back to the beginning. I'm going to give it three seconds and see what happens here. Yep, mine set up to go to play after that. Oh, interesting. So plus you have your, which basically that's how that works. But this stops and starts it. So this just, it just keeps going. Hold it for more than three seconds. It's now play. Interesting. Okay. Again, it's just how you have it set up for what kind of tools you like to use in what you're doing. Sure. Because they're really, yeah, it's what you're comfortable with. It's the same way when I talk about uh, uh, volume faders opposed to cross faders. Each DJ, DJ likes their own sort of thing, you know, so it kind of fits in with that. So that's the basics of it. Like I said, it's the ins and outs. Like I said, if you're a person who mixes, this is so ridiculously basic. It's not even funny. So, I mean, like if I were to, to, to be somewhere doing this, thinking that I was uh, king of the world, uh, DJs who knew how to mix would be like, you're not doing anything. Like literally you, you, you're doing stuff that an app can do, you know? So, but then again, we just watched a, 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 picked video on chew tv where the gal was probably not even doing as much as you just did yeah see that's the thing that a lot of them that'll do that and you'll see them and they'll i'll go back down to this and show you kind of what the other person was doing i don't mean to bust on because i don't know who that person is so i'm not going to bust on them you know but as, as the song's playing um they're just constantly touching things but nothing's doing it so if i'm doing a mix i literally i'm going to be bringing stuff in and out because back in the days we didn't have a lot of the effects we had to use like this so if i wanted to do a flange effect um turning them opposite sure and that's what you would do if you were actually doing some of the mixing but most of the time those people who do that aren't doing anything <laughs> that's the thing. They're mm -hmm. just touching knobs. They're not actually twisting them, which some are, some aren't. But again, they're all just tools to just kind of work your way through it. Uh, and again, 
this is like I said, it's so basic, but it's if you are a person who isn't familiar with mixing and want to start basic mixing, this is how you take the basic tools and techniques and start from there and build. Number one, these songs that I chose, I chose them because they're really simple to pick the points because you sure. might have another song that might not be as easy to find those points to make that perfect. Mm -hmm. um, you might have to be a little bit creative. Um, I picked these to show them as a tool just because, like I said, they're easy to see. You can see when that first beat, I'll just go up and grab another one from up there. Um, let me think where I'm at here. And we'll pick just another one. I and mean, we'll do one more from up there and just show you ins and outs. And, and then, then, and just, then yeah. MJ, if you could just uh, kind of walk through um, the setting and removing and uh, replacing of a cue point. Well, again, it all depends upon the software and how you have it programmed. Okay. With virtual, uh, you set. So let me grab a song here. I'm going to grab uh, their version of I Want to Dance with Somebody, which I already have cue points in there. Okay. So... Theirs comes in like that. So so we're on the left deck. So you have three cue points already set because those three cue points are, are uh, th those three buttons are lit up. Yeah, because that's what I've already set them for some reason. Usually the first one, I'll set that first one just on the first beat. So if I need to do something, but that also gives me the chance to jump ahead so that if I, I don't want to wait that whole distance, but if I want the mix to have that subtle without it being heavy, without being without that being there, I can do there. And whenever I want to, I can just jump up and it's seamless as it jumps up. But with, with virtual... But you're um, hitting that on, on beat. So you're hitting, you know that your second cue point's on beat one, so you're going you know, three, four yeah. cue point. Yeah, that's kind, of a, that's kind of a given. I don't mean to presume that everybody knows that, but you put them on the downbeats. Or if you want a certain kind of effect, like if I wanted to bring that in, something weird, I could put a cue point there that tells me... See, I might do that someday where I would put a cue point there so I could scratch it in. if I wanted to. So it kind of, like I said, it kind of gets to the song. The stuff I'm showing tonight is this super basic. We're not going past the super basic, just the super basic. Other stuff is further down the road where you start picking songs apart. But like I said, with virtual for adding and setting them. So let's say I wanted to set one there on that high point right there. Um, I would press four and set it. And if I want to go with it, right click on the mouse, gets rid of it. On the deck, I press the button to set it and shift and that same button then erases it. So it kind of depends on how you have it set up. So is that fitting in the question there? Yep, I think I think so. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick, like I said, let's let's grab one that I didn't put any cue points on. Yeah. Something that has no play. So I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna sort these by play count and scroll way down. Oh, I added play counts on these so they'll jump up. So Burning Down the House has one, that has one. I put that in, I put that in, I put that in. I got to find one that I didn't already put stuff in on. All right, as long as you love me, Justin Bieber. Bieber, everybody loves Bieber, right? Long intro right there. So we're going to go find his first words. Because I, I can read waveforms really well, I know it's going to be right here. So that really wouldn't be the first word because this song's a little different. He starts ahead. But I would still put Q.4 there. Okay. Back off eight. And that gets me here. All right. So we're there. So if I wanted to do an intro and outro, um, what BPM? I don't even know what BPM I'm on there. Um, oh, they're, one they're really close. Is it? No, no, no. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> well, if I want to do the same thing here and do those eight, um, that's all I have to do. So I picked those eight in and eight out, the exact same thing. And on this one, like, like this one over here has its outs, we're going to go to the end of the song here and find out where his... I'm going to guess by looking at that there. So that's one of those ones that has the, the words out and then that long part before they actually get to the kick drum. So I'm setting my last one there, going back to setting number four there. So the same thing that if I wanted to come back into this song right there, I would do the same thing in reverse. Same sort of thing. 
super duper uber bass. So if a person is doing this, um, and and you say are going to be playing a set of songs, eight songs. Let's put, let's just use that as a number that are all going to be kind of in the same beat as you're going through this. Set. Mm-hmm. You're going to you'll be doing the in and outs like that. Do you change it up based on the song? Like if I'm going to maybe this time I'll I'll use a flanger effect on my way out. This time I might use the echo. Do you do you vary it? Do you? I mean, I, for me, yes. I, I that's one of the things that I talk about when I teach my classes is that I teach you thirty different ways to transition between two songs. So that gives you an opportunity to keep it really fresh. Because a lot of guys, every single time, it's going to be. Um, then the next, then the next song comes in. It's going to be. Next song is going to come in. It's going to be. Every time, sure. scratch and go, 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 which is fine, but. I like to keep it fresh and change it up with backspins and echo outs and, and flangy because I can even do little flangy things that I'll do sometimes with, with some of the effects that I have built in here. Or there's a, a, a – what is it called? I can't remember what the effect's called. It's called uh, Beat Grid. So Beat Grid does this. All right, so you heard that little stutter? Yep, yep, yep. All right, so what I'm going to do on this one is that I'm going to show you here. Let me flip over, and I'm going to show you the beat grid to add a little bit of an effect on the way out. So all I'm doing is hitting my my beat grid effect on that, which is, okay. So we're going to go over here and go in here, and I'm going to hit it over on this deck. So I would be hitting it. Okay. So letting it come in. Let me get that, let me get that out of there. Because that share thing I know covers up right there, so I'm gonna get rid of that. We don't see it. Uh, do you you don't see the the pause and play buttons up here? Uh, I'm not seeing what, what pause and play you're referring to, but right. there's no, no it's, share it's for the chew, the chew pause and play, not my pause and play, the chew pause and play. All right, These so what I'm gonna do yeah, on this no. one is I'm gonna bring it in, same sort of thing, link it, start it, and then do the effect out, and then a pause. Actually, two effects. Let me do it that way. I'm gonna do two effects: the stutter effect out. And then the, the dump. So I'm, the last thing I'm, you're going to hear is, let me back that off a little bit. Okay. All right. So uh, you're going to hear the stutter. So that's what you're going to hear out. So it's going to be. All right. So we're going to put that over top of each other then. So go back to here. Sorry. But I'm going to do it on the other side. So, ready? Do that again because I was actually off beat there. It's actually off beat. How about that? So you add a little stutter there. That's all I'm doing. And there's a different way that you can bring it in. Make it totally sound different than it did before by doing the flat spins in, flat spins out. And then you do fans. You can do echoes. You can twist a knob if you want to. Like one of the things on this, uh, I like on the 7000 because it has uh, a very prominent um, high-low filter. So a high-low. this is the high-low filters for it. So if the song's playing... One's taken out the top, one's taken out the bottom. There it is. So I might be doing something where it's linked. You can twist in and out and play with it and have some fun. So never- remember, last week we talked about this, that um, it, it's a lot about having fun. Mm-hmm. So keep that in mind. That's part of why I want to teach you guys this, because it's fun. Uh, yeah, we're almost at, well, no, we got a few more minutes. Yeah. We do have to shut down early so we can get the next show, because there is no show, Jeremy. And what's the guy's name? I always forget his name. Dave Turnier and Jeremy Dave. Breck. Yeah, so their show, make sure you guys stick around and check it out. Um, a lot of good stuff there. 
Um, but that's the basics on this. I'll answer some questions now if you want. Like I said, again, this is not, again, you, you can do this without a controller, but as you see, it's a lot easier to, to press the buttons than it is to try to mouse and stuff. That's all. Certainly. That's what makes it a little bit more simple to, to make your cuts and stops and your, you can do the scratches in and back spins out and all kinds of stuff. I, you can actually do an echo out with a scratch, um, which I haven't done in a zillion years. So all I'm doing is taking the volume down, 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 down. It's all okay. Actually, creating a fake echo out. Well, actually, back then, it's the only choice we had. We had no buttons to do that. That's how you had to do that. Back in the, back in the day. Back when I was but a young man. Okay. Just, uh, uh, yeah, I can't stay. We, we are talking because Howie and those guys last night had a chat kind of like we did a few weeks ago where everybody did it, and it was crazy popular. So we are definitely 100% going to do another one of those types of open chats for this show probably the last week of this month. So it'll probably be the 31st of January. We're going to do one of those, and you guys can come in with your cameras and hang out. Um, I would even challenge you that night because – we're a little bit more free on those nights that if you want to have your deck set up oh, cool. yeah. d- during the two hours, we can take a couple things and you can show some things and, and whatever you want to do, you know, and, and that's kind of what we want to have fun, you know, but it's a kind of the event that if you're part of the insiders, John, in a couple seconds, will tell you how to get part of that. And it will let you sign in uh, and seeing with the camera and, and, and join in because uh, I can't remember the dude's name that was jo- talked with us last week and does a bunch of stuff. And I wanted him to kind of sign on and do the same thing. He was hanging out with us. I, I, I totally blanked on the dude's name. Um, young guy. Um, Barr? No, it wasn't Barr. Was, um, was Brandon with us last week? I think it was Brandon. Yes, it was Brandon. <laughs> yeah. So it, he was just hanging out with us. And I'm like, I know he wanted to like join in. So I, I say, let's do it. Let's have some fun, you know? Because like I said, if you put decks and a bunch of DJs in a room, at least the DJs that I hang out with, everybody's just going to be elbowing over trying to take their turn and they're just, they're going to be switching and we'll do things that what we call uh, DJ roulette. And basically let's say I'm spinning right now. And then John's going to come up after me. Uh, the roulette means that I pick the song he has to mix. So I pick it loaded. It. He has to mix whatever I, I choose for him to, to DJ. And then he gets to choose the next person's one. And it kind of leaves this challenge thing to kind of push your limits and see what you can do. Uh, MJ, there's a question on uh, labeling your cue points. Somebody was asking if you label them. I do them by numbers because that's kind of, I'm kind of, uh, ma- I want to say mathematical, but kind of more. Uh, um, how do you, how do you set a, to set a label on a cue point? I don't know if I've done that. Yeah, you can, you can change them. You can go in and actually number them. And that's part, with virtual, it's different with each one. Again, Serato okay. different. I believe it's points, points of interest with um, virtual. And if I were to click on that one, that's right there. And I think I would change the name. Like, yeah, right here. I'm not show. sharing. Crap. <laughs> I was say, show us the screen. <laughs> right here. Can't you see? I, I, yes, it looks fabulous. Can't you see the reflection okay. in my eyes? <laughs> so as you see the little blue, tell me when it goes up. You yep, yep we're seeing that. Yeah. All right. So all these little things here, the blues are the cue points that I had set. And it's under, uh, again, if you're, if you're doing virtual, you do a right click and the POI editor. And then within the POI editor, each one of those. So I click on that and it highlights which one it is. And then I can just go and, and put a name in there. Okay. So some are that simple. I just keep mine numbered because like I said, my way of doing it is um, so that I know one through four on most songs, not every song, but one through four, my four are four different ways to bring the song in and four different ways to go to get out of the song. So if I want to do a quick mix, Q.6, I mean, Q.5, might be the first, like on a full length song, get out of it here. That's my, that's the one to get out of it. So um, I can actually show you one real quick here. Uh, that is, uh, do I have it there? Should have it. Yeah, no. Why is it not finding that one? I can't find it. Let me go 
here. And sorry about this, folks. I can't find that song, and I just played it Saturday night. <laughs> what the deuce, Batman? Oh, whoops. I have my play count, too. Is this, is this the one? I don't know. Let's see if it loads. Speed up. Dad. Yeah, okay, so here. Um, it is a <coughs> mashup of Gas Pedal and uh, French Montana. And one of the things that I get out of the song, same sort of thing here, so I get it to share. So if I'm doing that one, and then I go into French Montana unforgettable um my cue points again are that one there yep. and five so i'm in the middle of the song and i know i want to get out it's the same thing that i'm going to do and i'm into the other song so i don't wait for the whole song it's a full length song i get out of it that quick and that's what five, five through uh, eight on for me. That's why I number them. So I know five through eight are usually out. Get out of it here. Here's a or or, or simply here's a place to get to out. Get out. Of it, yes. You know, yeah. And that's why I number them that way. And usually leave four and eight as being first words and last words. So that if I see a four, that's I got to be into the song by the time I get to that cue point four. Otherwise, I'm going to overlay words and it's going to sound terrible. Mm -hmm. And um, same way, getting out. If I don't get out by that point, I know all they're going to hear is kick drum. And I don't want them to hear just kick drum. I want it to be mixed. What's, what's actually in the business called posting. So at the end of the very last word, it's, that's on the eight beat. And the very first word of the next song should be on the one. So it should be five, six, seven, eight, one. So there should be no dead points, no beats, no kicks, no nothing. It should be pop. Um, uh, Keith asked about the three transi transition effects that you, you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. Do you want, does he want to see them again or what's, uh, I'm not just, sure. uh, just to list them out. I think he's taking some notes. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I'll show, I'm going to change down to here and we're going to go to the camera and show you why I have them set up and mine are set up right here. But again, it, it goes the last controller I had, they were somewhere else. Uh, you can MIDI map them off. Other ones, you turn a knob to put that effect in line. So like if you want the backspin, you turn the knob and select backspin and then press the button. So mine are all right there to just be triggered. So the echo is the next one over is the backspin, which I do both. And the next one is the dump. That's all. And one of the effects that I do is because that dump right there, you can do that on this most controllers, a lot of the pioneers have this slow stop. So it's a slow stop and you, and you make that adjustment. So if I turn that up just a little bit, whoops, turn up a little bit more, you have that effect. So I would do the backspin out where I would go. And put the two of those together to give a smoother out. Sure. Because if I didn't, if I didn't stop it on that, um, it would just start playing again. So to kind of give it that little, instead of doing a, a cold cut on, on the, on the volume, I give it a little bit of an effect there. Whoops. Give it a little effect that way. Just to, again, it's all the little tiny things that you're doing to, 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 to make it blend and sound more natural uh, instead of just being hard cuts in and out or, or a fade that isn't mixed. All this stuff is that is to kind of smoothen that up. Smoothen is that a word? <laughs> smoothen. Smoothen. Yes, that's a technical. Smoothen to the oldies. No. Um, <laughs> so that's like I said, and I didn't want to go too far into that because I just wanted to show that the, the super simple t tools and techniques of being able to do that. Because that's something like I said, if you own a controller, you're able to do what I just did without all the all the effects. If you want to add the effects, perfect, go for it. If you want to scratch in and out, perfect, go for it. But at least minimum with those tools and techniques, you'll be able to do that if you choose to. It's your life, your DJ, it's your dance. <laughs> it's your, your, your show. Hey, the gang, thank you for being with us tonight. If you have any questions or anything, please put those into the chat uh, or down below, the comment section down below, because we're going to lose the side chat here and then it goes away. So if there's anything as you, after the show you think about, please put that down below. And we try to kind of keep up with those for a few days after the shows go live. If you're watching this in 2019, no, we're not going to be replying to your comment. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Sorry. We've got a statute of limitations. 
Uh, MJM mentioned the DJ and TV Insider. That is an area in which we have uh, a group of people who are passionate about what we do here at DJ and TV and help to support um, the shows and are involved with the shows and different things. You can go to DJNTVInsider.com and you can sign up there to keep up to date on what's going on. We're going to be getting to the point uh, a little bit later in the year where these live shows, these live DJ hangouts, are only going to be publicized to the people who have signed up for the DJ and TV Insider. So, if you're liking the shows and you want to be able to hang out in such windows, we're going to be popping these little shows up. We actually were scheduling some today at weird times. And those are weird times because we know from traditionally watching your viewership over the last five years, when there's open nights that you guys are going to be like, hey, we should hang out as DJs. Yeah, we're, those things are going to be all uh, publicized in a DJ and TV Insider. So go there, sign up for the free level. If you're really passionate about what we do and want to help uh, support the different videos and shows and things we do, you can do that there also, and that would be awesome. So, okay, I think I think Jeremy and Dave are just about ready to come in. MJ, thank you much for, for the show tonight and the information and such. I picked up a couple of ideas and things I can try at my next event. That's always scary. That I learn things every time we do one of these shows. Yeah. And like I said, we're both, this show, in the future, we are going to be talking songs. We're going to be talking software. We're going to be talking hardware. Um, but it's all more on that mix, next level mix kind of stuff. So ne next week, we may end up just talking about software. Um, I did, for those of you asking, uh, I am not, I asked Serato if I'm allowed to talk about the new Serato. I'm not allowed to say anything <laughs> whatsoever. So I can't do that. But the day that it, they give me the go ahead, we're going to be talking about it and showing the brand new Serato. So other than that, like I said, feel free to drop me a line or put it in the notes of stuff you would like to see us cover on the future shows too. So, that, you know, if anything there, feel free to ask, say, Hey, can you do a show on this? So cool, cool, cool. All right. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be back in about 10 minutes with the Jeremy and Dave. Mm -hmm.